Hey guys, my name is Sid and welcome to another episode of Living in Dubai. So the most popular question we get is how to get a job in Dubai and I'm not an expert at this. I thought I'd get my friend Jaya to come on the vlog and talk a little bit about recruitment. She's an experienced recruiter and she's been doing this for a long time in Dubai. So I thought she'd be able to give you guys some useful advice and tips about how you can go about getting a job. Hi, my name is Jaya and I'm currently working uh, for a company called Jade Consultants. I've been doing recruitment for the last five years. So the topics that we'll be covering today is websites to visit when you're applying for work, uh, LinkedIn tips, interview tips, uh, jobs for fresh graduates, how to go through, uh, how to apply for a job if you're a fresh graduate, and uh, last but not the least, the impact of social media on uh, while you're looking for work. So, Jay, so where do we start? The best websites maybe to apply? Right. Mm. Um, so I always advise all my candidates to uh, first of all, first and foremost, go and register on uh, the top four websites in Dubai. Uh, that would be gulftalent.com. Uh, you have monstergulf.com. Uh, the best one is bait.com. And last but not the least, knockrygulf.com. Uh, their job boards where uh, it's free to register uh, candidates don't have to pay for anything uh, all you have to do is go online register your CV and you're done that's obviously that's where you start off with do you think it's effective though uh, well there are quite a few other places that you need to register and you know be uh, be seen um, I think LinkedIn has come up in a huge way recently mm. um, you know a lot of it's a marketplace actually so you have a lot of recruiters, headhunters looking for people. Uh, you have a lot of job postings as well. So it's one of the, uh, the most effective places to be seen. We often find that candidates forget to update their LinkedIn profile and uh, match it to their CVs. So uh, uh, that's one of the main things to keep in mind uh, if you're a candidate looking to apply. Uh, make sure that it matches. Um, and another thing is um, recruitment agencies. That's yet another um, you know avenue to apply for for jobs mm -hmm. like tell us some like interesting or funny stuff that you might have seen on people's profiles on linkedin oh, wow. like, what you should not be doing on linkedin i could write a book on that <laughs> uh, but okay uh, here are a few things i've seen and maybe you know uh, as uh, you can avoid this as a candidate uh, make sure you don't do these things mm -hmm. um right i've seen uh, things like you know a selfie with your dog as a as a picture that's a no no that's you don't do that you don't post a selfie no loan x you know people do that uh, like clothes. revealing clothes Re no revealing clothes um i've seen uh, candidates and stuff. oh yeah absolutely. <laughs> i've seen candidates with that uh, doesn't work <laughs> it's a professional side your future employer could be looking at you. So is there an advantage of going through a recruiter versus like, you know, going through a job board or something like that? Absolutely. Recruiters probably have a more, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one contact with their, with their clients. So they know what they're looking for. Um, but having said that, they're inundated with uh, CVs. If you're able to get hold of at least one recruiter mm. uh, who, is, who specializes in your area, yeah. nothing like it. So I, for example, cover facilities management, interior fit out, design, any of the post construction engineering work. Um, just like me, there are thousands and thousands of agencies out there that cover mm. other specialties. It's so hard to get somebody's attention. Man. I'm sure <laughs> you guys must be getting like We get that a lot. <laughs> we get that a lot. <laughs> so once you do get past that phase of yes. like being uh, selected for a job and then going for the interview, like what are some tips that you guys have for people who are interviewing? Right. Few tips that I would always uh, recommend is uh, make sure that you uh, do your homework. Uh, look up the company online, uh, get to know uh, what they do, what, what their industry is. That always helps when you sort of share that information at the interview stage. Make sure you dress well, uh, absolutely immaculate, uh, wear a suit on the day. Uh, if you don't have one, borrow it from a friend, uh, but that, that always leaves a good impression. Um, and arrive early, uh, if you're going to be taking the metro or a taxi, make sure you arrive early. And uh, yeah, um, you know, just sort of leave them with a good impression. And the most important tip I'll give mm -hmm. is um, if you get their email address, send them a thank you note. It always goes a long way. Draft a few questions, two to three questions, important ones. Um, and uh, yeah, best of luck. 
what can you expect in a like a regular job in Dubai? What are the usual perks that most companies offer these days? Absolutely. Typically in an offer letter, uh, the salary is broken down into basic salary, housing allowance and transport allowance. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what your package is made up of. Uh, so when clients ask you for, uh, you know, what are your expectations, they usually uh, ask for a lump sum figure in the sense, say for example, you're applying for an IT manager role and uh, the client will say, what are you expecting? So you say 25,000 dirhams. Mm -hmm. Now that 25,000 dirhams is going to be a total package of basic housing and transport allowance. Mm -hmm. uh, of that, 60% is typically your basic allowance, basic uh, package and uh, the rest of it is made up of housing, which is 30% and 10% is transport allowance. As per the UAE labor law, the company has to give you uh, medical insurance as well as uh, flight tickets back home because we're all expatriates here. It's either uh, an annual package, annual flight, mm -hmm. or it could be once every two years. It depends. The really. important thing actually is that uh, the breakdown is that you get 60% as basic and the rest is allowances. So that actually makes a difference when you uh, quit your job or when you end your contract because that will make a difference to your gratuity, right? Yes, absolutely. So you'll only get paid your gratuity based on that 60%, the basic part of it, and the allowances don't really factor absolutely. into that. Absolutely, and to add to that, even your bonus. Uh, usually, if you cover, uh, if you complete one or two years in your company, after the second year, it's discretionary, of course, mm -hmm. but each company provides a bonus. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you do get a bonus, your bonus is calculated on the basic package. Okay, how much of an impact do you think like your social media profile makes in like the recruitment process? Like if I have Facebook or like now I'm on YouTube and like people are seeing my stuff, like do you think it, uh, it might negatively impact? Uh, well, we always say that there are a lot of uh, you know studies done on uh, how social media can have an impact on your professional life, mm -hmm. and uh, there have been cases um, you know where if your Facebook uh, profile picture, for example, is mm -hmm. uh, really something awkward, you have an internet footprint now. So when can when even if a client or a future employer Google's you up mm -hmm. and comes across an image of yours which has been probably taken from Facebook. Right. Uh, you know, it can have an effect on your, uh, on your, you know, So you should be careful, I guess. Definitely. Okay, this is a big no-no. Mm. Uh, if you are having a day off, say you get a job and you're having a day off or you want a day off, mm -hmm. don't go on Facebook and post a picture that you're, you know, by the <laughs> beach sipping on pina coladas. Uh, don't do yeah. that because your boss might be on Facebook and he might just look you up. Right. So, you know, that's one of the other no-nos we tell our employees once they've got, once once the candidate has got the job, mm -hmm. don't do these things, don't make these mistakes. What about the other side of it? What, what about like positive influence that social media could have? Like YouTube or LinkedIn or some of these other social media channels can really be a useful tool to make yourself into like an authority figure yes. or like a thought leader in yes. a particular industry, right? Like yeah. you put up a video about a particular topic, something like we're doing right now, right? And like people will consider you to be a thought leader in that. Do you think that is something that candidates should like look into doing? Like maybe maybe making like video interviews or like creating content about specific topics that they're knowledgeable about? Absolutely. I think uh, you know, especially if you're a specialist mm. in your uh, if you're a specialist in your field, mm. uh, it makes a huge difference if you can contribute not just work wise but out of work. So mm. if you have to make a video, if you have a blog. Mm. You know, even if it's a written blog where you talk about your specialization, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or uh, anything that showcases your leadership qualities, right. I think that works in your favor because, uh, you know, companies would love to have a thought leader on board, somebody who can contribute to their company, not just uh, on their job or do their job right, but also contribute out, out of their work, you know, sort right. of, uh, in that space. So that it definitely makes a difference. One of the reasons that I started YouTube is because it's just such a powerful platform. Like when somebody like just sees a video and and uh, hears you talking about it, it's so easy to upload to YouTube. Anybody can do it, but not everybody does. And when you do, like I think it does help you to like establish yourself in yeah. like uh, and like in that person's mind. 
make you more of an authority on that subject. Yes, right? because it makes you stand out from the crowd. You know, we, we end up seeing so many paper series. So mm. if you're doing a video uh, interview, yeah. uh, that's another thing that's coming up in UAE now. You have, say, Dubizil, mm. uh, another portal where you know you, you can apply for work, but Dubizil has video CVs. Mm. So, you know, you can sort of uh, upload a two-minute uh, message about who you are, what you do, and what are you looking for. So, what would you recommend, like, for the the new graduates who are just getting out of college and stuff? What options do they have to like get a job in Dubai? Right. Um, okay. So, I've personally used this website myself uh, mm -hmm. when I was looking for an intern. Internsme.com. So you can browse through, uh, you know, the candidate section where you see video interviews of uh, fresh graduates and what their interests are. Um, so there you have two segments again, you, two segments of jobs. You have the, the paid internship and the unpaid internship, mm. uh, which is typically three months. Depends uh, again from company to company. And uh, I've heard of a lot of cases where the internships have materialized or transferred to a proper job, cool. you know, a full-time job. So chances are very high for the company to just test the waters with a fresh graduate and then hire them full-time on board. Yeah, probably the best way to get your foot in the door, right? Exactly. Internship. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so we as a company, Jarkar, we also looked at internsme.com and we were looking to hire an intern for our company. So I would definitely recommend uh, all you guys who are looking for jobs who just graduated and stuff. Interns yeah. ME, yeah. they're like really filling a space where um, you didn't have that kind of facility before in Dubai. Like when I grew up, I think when we grew up, no, right? we didn't have that. They it's didn't have that option to like uh, get into an internship through a portal like this. And you have some good companies up there. Like you have uh, some of the MNCs yeah. who are looking for fresh graduates, uh, which, yeah. is, which is great. So it's a great. Uh, and a lot space. of the upcoming startups as well. Like I saw some yeah. jobs from Kareem and stuff. On yes, there as well. yes, yeah, so. yes. They're looking for fresh, uh, fresh uh, young people. Yeah. Yes, there's another company called Limon.com. That's actually for part-time jobs. So what is the legality of like doing these part-time jobs and stuff in Dubai like? Uh, so if you're a woman on your father's sponsorship or husband's sponsorship, then it's easier to find a part-time uh, job because you, what you tend to do is uh, you just go and um, start your job and then you can quit immediately. Cool. Uh, so as long as you're sponsored by somebody As else. long as you're sponsored by somebody. Uh, for men, unfortunately, that option is not really available because uh, you know, you're on visit visa or after 18 you don't get uh, residency if you're not working, working for a company. So yeah, if you're on visit visa, you're not allowed to work in Dubai. It's yes. illegal, yeah? so, so don't do that. Yes, you got to wait for your employment visa for, for the company to sponsor you uh, yeah. to, to be able to work over here. Even part-time work, it's illegal. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. Another interesting thing I wanted to get your thoughts on. Do you think there's a difference in the kind of packages that you get like based on your nationality? Uh, okay, this is a tough <laughs> one. Um, uh, look, honestly speaking, yes, uh, there are uh, certain nationalities where the packages do differ. If you have UAE uh, experience and you have the right credentials, there's no real reason why the company uh, won't offer you the correct, the correct package. But yes, so it also depends on the visa quota. Uh, there are a lot of multiple factors that, that come into play. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so to answer your question, yes, there's a slight difference in packages <laughs> for different nationalities. I mean, does. Personally, I haven't really experienced it. Um, you know, because uh, where I, I'm working, there's equal employment. So I guess it depends on the employer, right? Like, yes. but I do know, uh, I do know it does happen in Dubai. Like yes. different nationalities do get paid different kinds of packages. Yes, so. you're making me reveal a lot more than, than <laughs> I should actually. That's it for this video. You know, if you guys have any questions in regards to job recruitment or finding a job or anything like that, if you guys do, leave it in the comments below and we'll get Jaya to come on again and answer some of those questions for you guys. Gladly. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So if you like this video, hit that like button. Don't forget to leave us a comment and subscribe to see more videos like this. See ya. Bye.